Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Rob and in front of me here I have the pre-release version of SOLIDWORKS 2020. So it's getting to that time and there's tons of new features that are coming into the software. But there is one in particular that I'm very excited about and that is Decimate. So I have a part file open here. So as you can see, it's a tree. I mean, it looks kind of like a tree. But the thing is, uh, I want this tree to be rendered in a low poly art style. And if you haven't heard of a low, of low poly art style, that is when, well, as the name implies, the polygon count of a 3D model is low and it can look quite aesthetic. So up until now, there was, wasn't really a way to do this in SOLIDWORKS, it being an engineering program and all. But with Decimate, that is now possible. So let me be clear, Decimate is a feature that is actually supposed to help the workability of STL files. Uh, when you have an STL file with way too many triangles and it's slowing down your system, you use Decimate to take down the number of triangles it has. But you can actually use it for aesthetic purposes too. And that's what we'll do here. So here I have my tree and it's a little too round and curvy for my taste. And if you're wondering how it was created, it basically started as a, an initial revolve like that. And then I guess a little leaf bubble was created. And then it was copied all over the place and patterned around and stuff like that. Scale was applied, yada, 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 till it became the part that it is right now. So in order to turn this into an STL file, we'll do the following. So first we need to turn this into a mesh file. And you do that by going into your solid bodies folder and saying convert to mesh body. And here you have um, some control over the coarseness. And you might be thinking, well, why can't we do a uh, low poly art style here? Well, because if you put it all the way coarse, that is not nearly the amount that we're looking for. So nice try, but we'll need something else still. Okay, now our thing has been converted into a mesh. Now that we have this as a mesh body, there's still another step that we have to do. And it's because as of right now, Decimate only works with graphics bodies, which is a little bit different than a mesh body. So in order to get into the right uh, format, uh, I'm gonna use a save as, throw it into a new folder, and I'll just save this as an STL for right now. So tree STL, save. It'll have an amount of triangles and hit OK. So that's one part of it. So I'll just hit save on that and close. And now I'll bring my tree STL over here. So I'm going to click that. But before I do that, I'm going to go to options really quick. And I'm just going to make sure that it says import as graphics body. And that is correct. open and we'll have this come in as there we go graphics bodies you can see it, it populates this folder rather than the solid bodies folder but now we can go to our decimation so decimate mesh bodies found here but I believe you can actually activate it from here yeah if you right click on it and say decimate mesh body there we go so uh, here's the interface for uh, the decimation tool it's not too bad once you get used to it here. So it will tell you that currently that this tree has 6,800 facets, give or take, uh, currently. So we could either specify if we want to reduce by a percentage. So let's say that I want to reduce the number of triangles by 50%. I can just type that in here. And you can see that 50% of 6,800 is about 3,400. So that is Correct, so you can specify a percent reduction or you can specify a target number of facets. So I can say, well, actually I need this to be exactly 5,000 facets for one reason or another. So these two boxes drive each other. So when one, you, you put one in here, the other will change to whatever you want. This third box, however, is a little bit different. 
So with the decimation tool, people will obviously ask the question, well, how accurate is it to my original model? You know, we don't want to go changing things too much. And this is the error tolerance. So normally you want to keep this very minimal so uh, that your resultant mesh is very, uh, is very close to the original. But that's not what we're using it in this case. So if I make the error much larger, let's say, oops, maybe not that large, five millimeters, and then set this number to be very low, for example, 1000, we can hit calculate. It's working on it here. Ooh, that's already looking pretty cool. But you can still kind of see the uh, spherical shapes of my tree, and I want to kind of blend that, blend that in. So I can actually set this a little bit lower. So let's, I don't know, let's try 500. Reset, calculate. It's going to work on it a little bit. And it will either do it or tell me that I need to increase my error tolerance. So let's see which one it is. So at any rate, this thing is looking really good. This is exactly what I had in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to that. And that's pretty much it. I can save this as a separate part if I wish. And then save it as an STL. Oh, it's all the way at the bottom. I need to get used to that. Mesh. Yep, triangles 500 as, as expected. And then now we can throw that STL file to a 3D printer. For example, the two color 3D printer that I have. And you can get something like this, which I think it looks pretty awesome. Well, that's about it for today's video. So if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Even throw a comment down there. It really helps me and the channel out. But if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.